Hi everyone, and welcome back to the Genelec Immersive Audio video series. My name is Eric, and in this episode, we're going to have a look at the Immersive Audio content creation tools that are available, and we'll show you some practical examples. Let's go. All right, let's start with Dolby Atmos production tools, and in this particular case, with the DAW Pro Tools. Pro Tools has native Dolby Atmos panning capabilities built in, either in Pro Tools Studio or in Pro Tools Ultimate. Additionally to that, you would still require the Dolby Atmos production suite as a software-based renderer running on the same machine, or the Dolby Atmos mastering suite, which is the rendering device on a separate machine in the network. But as said, the panning can be created right out of Pro Tools natively. All other applications that don't have built-in Dolby Atmos panning capabilities can make use of the Dolby Atmos Music Panner plugin, which comes with the Dolby Atmos production suite. So, for instance, you're working in Ableton Live or in Reaper or in Studio One. Those DAWs can use Dolby Atmos, making use of the Dolby Atmos Music Panner plugin. Oro 3D plugin and production tools look a little bit different. There is a big suite of different plugins available. There is the Oro Panning plugin, which feeds into the mix engine. And the mix engine is where basically the mix gets compiled for the speaker outputs, can be seen as a kind of a renderer. And from the Oro mixing engine, it will be routed over to two different plugins where actually the physical speakers are connected to. One thing that we have to know in Oro 3D is when you put in the plugin into the channel strip, the volume automation has to be done right in that plugin because the format would require a post fader insert, which is rarely available in modern digital audio workstations. So the volume automation has been done right in the Oro 3D panel plugin. One addition is the Oromatic Pro 3D plugin. Um, a little later, I'm going to cover upmix tools, but this is already an upmix tool dedicated for Oro 3D content. So you can feed like stereo input or a 5.1 input, and this plugin will create you an immersive Oro 3D output depending on the channels that you're using. When we look at the MPEG-H production tools, there are not that many available than as Oro 3D or Dolby Atmos, but still some are available. For instance, you can make use of the own Fraunhofer MPEG-H authoring plugin suite that comes from the Fraunhofer Institute itself. You can sign up on their website to be eligible using those plugins, and then you get a link and can make use of it. Or you can use the Spatial Audio Designer plugin from New Audio Technology, a Hamburg-based company. Spatial Audio Designer is by default a format independent renderer environment and can be used with any shape and any style of speaker layout. The good thing is it has an MPEG-H output path, so you can right away export anything that you're doing in the Spatial Audio Designer as an MPEG-H file or delivery format. The 360RA production tools, um, of course, come first with the 360 Reality Audio Walk Mix Creator. That's the tool set that is provided by the format to do the native panning in that format. And we already learned about how to set up your speaker system according to 360RA uh, with this bottom line of three speakers in the front. And this is also nicely uh, visually reproduced within the plugin because as you can see on the left hand side, it is showing basically a 3D circle around the audience where you then can place your objects within 3D space. 360RA production tools can also be used uh, with the Spatial Audio Designer. Again, the new audio technology Spatial Audio Designer also has the possibility to export a 360RA delivery file for further um, distribution and delivery. When we have a little closer look on the different DAWs that are available on the market, first of all, I want to mention Logic Pro. Interesting thing is, with Logic Pro version 10.7 and upwards, there is a native integration of Dolby Atmos right into the software. Interesting part here and difference to Pro Tools is, you don't need an external renderer software or hardware. 
because the renderer is built in right into Logic. So you can open up your laptop, your Mac, and start right away. Um, a little limitation, maybe not a limitation for some, is that the maximum output channels that can be driven by Logic is 7.1.4 and binaural, obviously the binaural output for headphone reproduction. But if you need to go beyond 714, so let's say 916 or 914, then Logic might maybe not be the right tool. But for everything else, it's a very well designed tool. Steinberg Nuendo and Cubase both have internal and native integration of Dolby Atmos as well with a built-in renderer. Same way as Logic, difference to Pro Tools, so there's no need to get the production suite from Dolby because everything is built in to Nuendo and Cubase. But still, you can use it with an external renderer, especially in post-production applications where you have multiple computers playing back different content. Nuendo is playing a crucial role in post-production. Then you still have the object panner in the software that is available to create metadata for an external renderer that is provided by Dolby. Let's have a look on the multi-channel plugins that are available on the market to help create immersive audio content. Here we're seeing a couple of Reaver plugins that are available on the market. For instance, uh, from Liquid Sonics, they have the cinematic rooms, but also the lustrous plates and the illusion. So many different reverbs that come with multi-channel output capability. So those plugins can actually drive up to 706 on the output side which can be used then in Oro 3D environment, in the 360RA environment, but also in Dolby Atmos environment. A company from Hamburg, Penguin Audio, with the Ruminizer, it's also a combination of algorithmic and convolution reverb together with room ambience tones that are recorded in certain environments. It's a very nice multi-channel immersive reverb engine that uh, I would imagine works very nicely in post-production where you have real rooms that you need to capture and that you need to reproduce. Also, Isotope, uh, with the acquisition of Exponential Audio a couple of years ago, they bought the Stratos and the different other 3D-capable reverb engines. Uh, they also can provide up to 706 on the output side and makes it very simple to use in all kinds of different immersive audio formats in your DAW. There are many other more plugins available, but this is just an a little outlook on it. One plugin that I'd like to mention here as well on the reverb side because it follows a little bit a different strategy and a different approach and makes it very, very handy for all kind of immersive audio applications, also Ambisonics for instance, is um, Spacelab. Boom and Spacelab Interstellar from Fiedler Audio. The thing is it works as the following. You can install your Spacelab Interstellar onto a multi-channel output bus and this can be seen as a reverb renderer. And then you install or instantiate the Spacelab Boom plugins on your source tracks that you want to kind of reverberate. And it's sending positioning into information into the reverb engine. And it's actually triggering the reverb from a different 3D point in room. Whereas when you use other conventional reverb plugins that offer an, a multi-channel output, they are fed with regular left-right input and then create a reverb with a 716, 714 output. But in this particular case, the reverb is triggered on a certain 3D position, which makes it very different and very flexible to use in any immersive audio application. And then, of course, some standards and best practices that we all need in our session is EQ plugins and limiter plugins. This is just an example. Here as well, there are many more vendors and many more plugins available that support multi-channel output. In this particular case, it's the FabFilter series, Pro Q3, the Pro L2, and many, many more. It's just about your digital audio workstation that determines what is your maximum output width on the output side. And then many digital audio workstations also come with um, own plugins to manipulate sound on EQ and limiting side of things. Last but not least, a very important topic is upmix plugins. Sometimes it might be handy to upmix a stereo source or a 5.0 source and make it available in an immersive audio format. Here, there are a couple of upmix plugins available. I mentioned already the Oro 
Matic 3D Upmix plugin, but the new gen Halo Upmix and the Pintio 16, those are kind of the more or less standard plugins that are used to do upmixing from stereo to something, from 5.1 to something. It could follow Adobe Atmos uh, track layout, it could follow an Oro 3D track layout, it can even go to, into Ambisonics. So it can even upmix a sound into a third order Ambisonics environment, which is completely free of channel reproduction systems. Yes, so that was a very quick overview about the best practices and the tools that can be used to create immersive audio content. Again, it's very important for you to know that we have the Immersive Help Desk. If you have any questions about immersive audio technologies, workflow, speakers and tools, please send us an email to immersive.helpdesk at genelec.com. Go to the web, Google for the genelec.com slash immersive minus hub, where you get all the first information about all the immersive audio formats. And we would be happy to read from you. And always remember, it has never been easier to create immersive content than today. So good luck, have a good start into your immersive adventures and thanks for watching. Thank you.